the Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. the hills of Donegal for round three of the Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Far Street Championship where clerk of the course Johnny Baird and his team in the Donegal Motor Club have put together eight very special stages to mark their return to the championship since 2015. With the top three on the overall leaderboard, Josh Moffat, Sam Moffat and Desi Henry all absent from Donegal, round three of the championship provides a golden opportunity for a number of crews to make up ground on the front runners at a pivotal point of the season. We're looking forward to the day. Stages look good. A um, couple of very fast stages out there today, but should be very good. Um, the weather's obviously turned a bit wet for us, but it'll be good to keep the dust down. Um, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Adrian, a win here would do fantastic things for your championship. Yeah, I think maybe it would probably put us on top of the championship or close anyway, you know. And your thoughts on the stages? The stages are good. The first stage is very jumpy stage and, and very fast. The second stage is, is, is a bit more mucky and then the, you have the big stage at the end of the day, so it'll be good. David, we're under the canopy here, trying to stay a little bit dry. You're leading the two-wheel drive. You must be very confident going out there today. Um, I don't know about confident. Um, looking forward to it. First two rounds, a good runs, but a um, couple more guys out today and Shane and John Gordon, so competition will be a lot tighter today. Um, glad to see the rain keep the dust down. Was, I'm starting to worry about dust after the Moonraker we're suffering with the dust, so a bit of rain's not too bad today. As the crews left Raleigh headquarters at the Abbey Hotel in Donegal Town, a scenic drive through Barnsmore Gap brings them to the three stages that comprise the opening loop, which is repeated again before the final stage, which skirts Loch Derg to the south. line up here for stage one the rain is slowly coming down and the conditions are a little bit damp but the general consensus amongst the crews is that damp means no dust and that is welcome news quickest out of the blocks was a Skoda Fabia R5 of Marty McCormick the Maharao driver set fastest time on each of the three stages of the morning loop to open up a 19.3 second lead with navigator David Moynihan in over crest, big flat one right in over crest, 60 we break for three right, 60 now we break for three right, left for 60, three right very long, very long now. Adrian Hedrington's hopes of taking over the championship lead were dashed on the opening stage as his Toyota Corolla suffered mechanical trouble after some heavy landings on the very bumpy test. Also out was Johnny Leonard, who survived the daunting Stage 1 jumps, only to retire his Mitsubishi on Stage 2. In another Evo 6 was former junior champion Patrick O'Brien. The Omen native hadn't competed in some time and was delighted to be holding second place after three stages. Down. Straight jump, 80 down. One ahead. Straight crest, 80 down. Right on straight crest, jump. Big stop, only 80 to bus stop. Use the boards. There's 200. Boy, go on. Go stop. Left entry. And five right. Into very long four right. Nips, watch. Nips, watch. Just 2.2 seconds further back in third was the Evo 9 of Jordan Hone, who led Group N with his dad Paul navigating. David 
Crossan's terrific form continued apace in Donegal. The County Down driver finished the opening loop in fourth place overall and led the two-wheel drive section with Damien Fleming navigating in the Mark II Escort. John Armstrong made the step up from the R2 class to a four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Evo 10 and the heftier machine proved quite a handful on the difficult opening stage. Lucky to escape that big moment, John finished the loop holding fifth overall. Stage one is really catching a lot of people out. Yeah, we just went wide over a crest and went in the ditch a bit and spun up the road, but uh, thankfully there's no major damage, so we could have been a lot worse. Less than two seconds adrift in sixth overall was Cahan McCourt, who kept a neater line through that tricky section of stage one. An early overshoot left Darren McKelvey with some ground to make up as he held 7th overall in his Group A Mitsubishi. First stage we went straight on at the first corner and probably lost about 10 seconds on it, but... That corner's catching out so many people! Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Darren's father, Robert McKelvey, was competing in a Group A in Mitsubishi and was 6th in class for the moment. 14 seconds ahead in fifth was the Evo 9 of Patsy Keenan, who had flown back to Ireland from Atlanta, Georgia for the rally. Five left over dip, 40, left on crest into five right line, and five right again, 80, five right and five right, 80, to slow four left, 50 to bus stop left entry. Second to David Crossan in the two-wheel drive battle, former champion Shane McGurr felt his starlet wasn't cut out for the jumps of Donegal, and he held eighth overall. Just 0.3 of a second back in ninth overall was the escort of more former champions, Mickey Conlon and Kieran McPhillips from Monaghan. Rounding out the top 10 in their Mitsubishi Evo 8 was Cork crew Jared Lucy and JJ Kremen. Sure, you're welcome to Donegal. How are you finding this loop? This loop is very, very tricky, slippery and bumpy, but lovely at the same time. After a non-finish on round one and a non-starter at the last round, John Gordon was hoping to get his championship back on track in Donegal and he held fourth in class and 11th overall after three stages. John, have you a smile on your face after those few stages? Yeah, it's great to get back out again. Very slippy. We took a wee bit of a detour in the very first stage on the first corner and we went off and then had to come back on again, so my own mistake. Carrick Fergus man Ian Graham loved the Donegal stages and was 2.8 seconds further back in 12th overall. Not so happy was Enda McCormick. The New York based Longford native had a torrid opening loop in his Subaru WRC, which included a stage 1 puncture and this stage 3 incident. That loop for you, how did it go? Uh, not good at all. The, the first stage we got a puncture. And then in the last stage there, we took out a bail and chicane, so not very good. A lot of moments. Yeah, a lot of moments. Just very slippy, but just not good at all. Another to come to blows with that stage three chicane was Emmett Cronin. The Middleton driver led class 12 and didn't look too upset to be locked into his Mark II Escort at the end of stage three. A small bit of a fight with the chicane, but stages are massive. Yeah. The first, first stage was the nicest forestry stage I've ever done. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stages. Totally, totally different to what we've done south, like, you know, loads of jumps. And you stay doing the first stage all day long. Second to Cronin in the Pinto class were Chris Sims and Mo Downey, who were just 1.8 seconds adrift after the opening loop. Chris, how are the hills of Donegal treating you? Very good, we're a couple of moments in that stage there now, but yeah, we're going well. Just trying to find my way as usual, just. Smile on your face, you're enjoying it? Yeah, well the first loop's always the hardest for me just to get into the swing of it again, but yeah, we're going good. Third in class 12 was Donegal crew Donald Connolly and Danny McLaughlin. On a one right, there's a fast seat right here. And on a one right after it's a hundred and thirty. And a sharp four right. There's a sharp four right at the top here. 
and then tightens it three right and loose. Joint leader of the Junior Championship after two rounds, Shane Keneally got off to a good start in Donegal and led the class after the opening stage. One left of a crest jump again and one right of a crest jump. 150 over bumps. Right on crest. One left into dip, 80. Crest into left on crest, 130 over bumps. Sadly, his rally ended on stage two when he broke a drive shaft in his Honda Civic. Massively disappointing for the Waterford driver. Marty Gallagher's busy rally schedule saw him tackle rounds of a number of different championships in his Peugeot 208. But he was back in Donegal and leading the junior class after three exhausting stages. Marty, tough stages? Yeah, very tough. We got a puncher in the first stage, but half a mile into it. So we kept going the first stage, but the, the brakes there, it's just, it must be a leak in the back pipe there. But sure, we're still here anyway. Uh, you're happy to get into service? Oh, definitely. It's a wee cup of tea now, it would be grand. <laughs> Corkman John O'Sullivan was over 17 seconds further back in second in his fourth Fiesta or two. Third in class was the Fiesta of Stephen Dixon, who shared the top spot in the Junior Championship with Shane Keneally. But after Shane's exit, could Stephen capitalise? Right left, 170 over bumpy, up to mid crest bump at top, and six left plus 150. Mayo's Alan Moran was fourth in class, just 0.2 of a second back in his Peugeot 206. Fifth was the Fiesta R2 of Johnny Mulholland and Jeff Case. O'Brien Plant Hire Junior 1000 class for 16 to 18 year olds entered its third round in Donegal and once again the Peugeot 107s of Alex Byrne and Jason Murphy lined up to do battle. Clutch issues thwarted Jason's efforts on the opening loop and it was Alex who emerged with the class lead after three stages. Navigator John Fogarty driving for the unlicensed Alex on the road sections. Alex, a great battle going on between yourself and Jason in the J1000. Yeah, the battle is good now. We had a good start to the morning. We were first stage, we really got to grips with it. Second and third, we had a real good stage time, so everything has gone well so far. Leading the rally overall, however, was the Skoda Fabia of Marty McCormick. Marty, leading after the first loop, you must be delighted with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I found it very tricky this morning in the first stage now, and I know it caught a few people out, and I can understand why. Um, very tricky to just to adjust to the grip level and, uh, and the nature of the stages, but uh, we're having a nice, good, clean run. Uh, very happy. Really enjoyed that last stage there now, and it was a nice flowing stage, so thumbs up. So, with three stages down and five to go, that's how the leaderboard looks at the Abbey Hotel Donegal Forest Rally. The weather is slowly brightening up here in Donegal, which would be welcomed news to the remaining crews. This morning's loop proved too difficult for many of the crews, and they are now unfortunately out of the race. But there is still more action to come from the Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forestry Championship. Join us after the break. The Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. Welcome back to the beautiful northwest region of Ireland for part two of the Abbey Hotel Donegal Forest Rally. There was a big improvement in the weather conditions for the second loop of three stages where rally leader Marty McCormick extended his overall lead to 46.4 seconds. Left 40, flat one right, don't cut up a bridge, right, flat right. 40 left 170, the flat one right in, in the flat crest, 230 over crest, stop for turn 6 left plus, turn 6 left plus the arrow. 
It wasn't plain sailing for Patrick and Stephen O'Brien, who broke a rear strut in their Mitsubishi on stage four, but held on to second place over the next two tests. A fastest time on stage four saw John Armstrong and Noel O'Sullivan climb to third overall, but mechanical problems in the Mitsubishi Evo 10 led to retirement on stage six. Illustrating how easy it is to lose it over the many crests and jumps, Jordan Hone slipped off the road in front of our cameras on stage four. It was a disappointing retirement for Jordan and his dad Paul who had been third overall and leading Group N earlier in the day. Now up to third overall whilst leading the two-wheel drive section, David Crossan had cause for concern when he broke a shock absorber at the end of stage six. David, you're away on your own at the moment for problems. Yeah, we had a good first uh, six stages, but we have a bus shock here. Just felt at the end of the last stage here, the car was moving about a bit, so hopefully we can get it uh, sorted here. We have a 26 second lead in the two-wheel drive, so hopefully we can get it fixed. Patrick, you're holding second, but you've also got problems. Hi, the first stage out there, I think we broke an arm or something in the back, so we're just trying to drive about and not break any more. And stage seven and eight, 17 kilometres ahead of you, to do twice. I, I'm looking forward to that, but hopefully the boys can get it fixed now and they get back out and get a bit of a push at it. With Armstrong and Hone out, Cahan McCourt and Brian Hoy took over the Group N lead and held fourth overall with two stages to go. Up to fifth overall, but still second in the two-wheel drive battle, Shane McGurr's starlet suffered two punctures across the afternoon stages. Showing great sportsmanship, Mickey Conlon lent McGurr his spare, despite being still less than a second behind his rival. Anything to keep the battle going. Just over a second further back in seventh overall was the Mitsubishi Evo 8 of Jared Lucy and JJ Kremen. The court crew were sandwiched between the battling two-wheel drive crews and just four seconds adrift was the escort of John Gordon and Thomas Wedlock, who would be glad of the brief respite that service offers those who can get away with it. I have Mickey Conlon and John Gordon's navigators here, Thomas and Kieran. How are you guys? How are you getting on? I'm oh, getting on well. I think there's a bit of a battle starting up, so big push into the last two stages to try and take the, take the boys, the teammates. <laughs> And stage seven and eight, huge uh, stage, 17 kilometres to be ran twice. Yeah, look, it's going to be the fittest. I don't know, Mickey's not that young, so I don't know what way he'll get on, but sure, look at, well, hang in there. Ah, oh, look at, David's out in his own today, but there's a great battle there between Joe and Shane and ourselves, so we'll see how it goes. It was supposed to be two runs over the 17 kilometre final test, but the organisers were forced to limit that to one, so the pressure was on to make it count. Sonny Gall crew Derek Hina and Barry McGill had to settle for third in class nine. Slow four left and third five right. Watch this five right. It's more like a six. Right. Get, well, get well on in your side. Get well on. Get well on. 200. Class three right. Kieran McCullough and Eamon Conway took second place in their Vauxhall Nova. Taking their second Class 9 victory in a row were Rory Maguire and Grace O'Brien in the Vauxhall Corsa. Mike Garrahy and Irla McCarthy won Class 10 in their Mark II Escort. Top female driver was Gemma Curley, navigated by Andy Kern in the Subaru Impreza. Patricia Denning took third in Class 11F, with Joe Downey calling the notes in the Peugeot 106. Second in Class 11F went to Adrian Beatty and Declan Ryan in the Honda Civic. It's a one left over crest jump. It's a one left over crest jump again. And one right over crest jump, 150 over bumps. Right on crest. And left on crest. It's a dip, 80. Taking the Class 11F win in the Vauxhall Nova was Dungannon crew Stuart McLean and Jared Neeson. Fellow Tyrone crew Damien McAleer and Benny Granger won Class 11 or in their Toyota Corolla Twin Cam. In Class 12, David Fitzsimmons and Leonard Chute finished third in their Ford Escort G3. After their earlier mishap and a few more besides, Emmett Cronin and Adam Coffey had to settle for the runner-up spot in their Escort Mark II. Four left in here at the bottom. It's a long flat crest. Easy. Come on, you 
Easy. Chris Sims and Moe Downey overtook Cronin on the second loop and held on to take the Class 12 win by just 1.9 seconds in the end. Derek Mackerel made the step up from his not-so-trusty Nova to a four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Lancer and took an impressive victory in Class 15, finishing 11th overall with navigator Dara Hayes. In Class 16, the juniors, class leaders Marty Gallagher and Dino Sullivan were forced to retire with mechanical trouble on the second loop. Also unlucky to exit were Alan Moran and Kane Trainer, who retired from second place on the final test. Finishing third in the juniors were Johnny Mulholland and Jeff Case in the Fiesta R2. Over a minute ahead in a similar machine were junior runners-up John O'Sullivan and Paddy McCrudden. But taking the junior win in their Ford Fiesta were Stephen Dixon and Tommy Hayes, who now lead the category overall. Stephen, congrats. A huge win in the juniors. Yes, that was tight all day. I come up to one second between three of us in the middle of the day, and we're 13 down going into the last stage, and we took 22 back, so we, we won by over 10, so it's, it's good end of the day now. In the Junior 1000 class, Alex Byrne had led all day until mechanical trouble and some resultant road penalties cost him dearly, handing victory to Jason Murphy and John Burke, who edge ahead by one point on the class points table. Jason, to win the Junior 1000, you must be delighted. Yeah, happy enough. We had a hard day, a few clutch problems in the morning, but we got rid of them in second service and we were happy enough with the run after that. To the top 10 overall finishers now, and taking 10th place for Ian Graham and Liam McIntyre in the Mitsubishi Evo 9. Enda McCormick and Colin Fitzgerald endured some early mishaps to claim 9th overall in the Subaru Impreza S10. And six left over crest jump, 100 over jumps, and left and crest jump, and six right, and caution, six right and crest jump, and three left, crest jump, and three left. Mechanical trouble on the final test saw Shane McGurr and Martin McGarty drop to 8th overall and 4th in class in their Toyota Starlet. John Gordon and Thomas Wedlock went 5.4 seconds quicker to finish 7th overall and 3rd in class. In the absence of others, 6th overall was enough to push Jared Lucy and JJ Kremen into the overall championship lead in their Mitsubishi. Mickey Conlon and Kieran McPhillips finished fifth overall, but had to settle for second in the two-wheel drive battle. Cahan McCourt and Brian Hoy finished fourth overall and won Group N in their Mitsubishi. I had a good run the other day and it was a wee bit treacherous this morning, but no, we got on ground. Last stage went very well for Sir, so we were happy enough. To the podium finishers now, and third overall was a fantastic result for top two-wheel drive crew David Crossan and Damien Fleming in the Mark II Escort. Patrick and Stephen O'Brien took second overall after a fine drive in their Mitsubishi Evo 6. But taking a convincing win in the Skoda Fabia R5 were Marty McCormick and David Moynihan. The Derry Court pair led from start to finish and had over a minute to spare as they returned to Raleigh headquarters at the Abbey Hotel in Donegal Town, where even Marty's baby girl Jessica was punching the air. Marty, you were leading all day long. You must be delighted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely delighted. We had a brilliant day, you know. Thanks, very thanks to uh, Donegal Motor Club for putting on such a brilliant event. You know, we really enjoyed it. Stages were very challenging, especially the first stage today. Wow, it was really a baptism of fire out there. But uh, we ha had a good run over the first stage, and then we just uh, kept a conservative lead from there. Patrick, a great day in the office. I was good enough for a bit of bother, but uh, the boys at R317 got it sorted, so happy to be here. David, you led the whole way along, but there was trouble towards the end. Yeah, in stage uh, six, we broke uh, front suspension. Um, so the guys got a shock in it. Uh, Mark and Taylor kept us in the rally. Our service crew, without them, we wouldn't be here. So fair play to them. And as the podium finishers pop the champion cork, let's take a look at the final results of the Abbey Hotel Donegal Forest Rally. The win sees Marty McCormick climb into the top five, but the big winners in championship terms are David Crossan in third and Ger Lucy, who tops the table at the halfway point of the season. The changeable weather conditions and the challenging stages here have meant that the Donegal Forestry Rally was no easy task for the competitors, but it's great to see a mix-up on the overall championship leaderboard. Join us next time when we head to Cork. We'll see you then.